or can you step up? What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Um, hope everybody's having a great day. It's, uh, you know, it's a little hard right now for Cowboy fans. And, um, you know, I'm going through all kinds of different emotions and trying to figure out what is going on with the Cowboys because, and, and this is not like I haven't been through this before. We constantly are. Oh, I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run on muck. This is what he does. This is what Jerry Jones does. Um, so we're, we're here, and, and we shouldn't have expected the Cowboys to do anything early in free agency. They have not done anything early in free agency in forever. Forever. So to expect the Cowboys to dive in feet first is kind of crazy. It's just not what they do. Shout out to my man, Law Nation, because he, he, him and I had a conversation the other day, and he put it right on the head. You know, it's like, you know how you do something. You don't change how you're doing it. Um, and the Joneses, we know from Stephen Jones, believes that, um, you know, we've won 12 games, you know, each of the last three years. So, you know, he's okay with it. But in the back of my head, I feel like this is – heading for divorce court uh, with Dak Prescott, that maybe the Dak Prescott haters may finally get what they actually want, that the Cowboys may be, and, and I could be wrong, because it's real easy for them to restructure a deal if they find something that they want. This could be that they're playing possum. I'm trying to give every outlet and bit of hope that I can, but what we've seen so far, and you know, we've seen people that have been kind of thinking the way I've been kind of thinking on this too. Um, here's where I think about, I, I relate things that happen with football with things that happen with my life. Cause you can see the same kind of parallels in things that happen. So, you know, when you're busy doing work, you know, you got plenty of work and stuff. You're not desperate for jobs and things. And you see a job that not every job is an easy job. You actually want to do the easier jobs that pay you more money than the difficult ones. Okay, I mean, that's just common sense. Why take a challenging job? Although, I, I did the Red Brick House, which was a challenging job. But when you get one of these customers that say, oh my God, I need you to do this, and you look at it, and it's like, this thing is a hell of a mess. I can do a couple other jobs with half of the work and make more money than doing this one. So what you do is, you put a number up there that's astronomical. Because the thought is, they'll just say, oh, no, it's too much. We, we, we're not going to do that. You know, thanks a lot. We appreciate you coming by and looking. Or you put a number up that's so high that it's like, okay, they're really going to pay that much? Then I guess I'll stay and do the job. So we've heard the $60 million thing. We've heard 105, the fan, say, you know, I'd take Baker Mayfield you know, in his $35 million a year or be happy with Kirk Cousins and save the money and have money to do stuff. Well, um, they could do stuff. Don't, don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you because to think that the New Orleans Saints were $73 million in the red just about two weeks ago and now have more money than the Cowboys – and this isn't like this is the first time they've been in the red like that. Let you know you can do stuff. For the Rams, who went all in and won a Super Bowl just a few years ago, to know that they've got more money than you do. For the Eagles, who just a year before went all in and made it to the Super Bowl and lost, and are out here signing everybody, including Saquon Barkley, Either you have people that are working for you that are incompetent and have no idea how to do their job, or you just don't want to do it. I don't know which one it is, but it's one or the other. You can sign people. You can if you want to. 
Now, maybe what the Cowboys are doing, and maybe they looked and they said, you know, we don't want to spend a lot of money on the running back market. We only want to spend three and a half. We'll, we'll look at the draft because maybe you have guys targeted in free agency to fill in other holes, and you look at it and say, if I spend $10 million for Derrick Henry, then that means I can't get the linebacker or the defensive lineman that I want that's going to fit what Mike Zimmer wants. Now, guys that we looked at and said, you know, the pipe dream, you know, like Daniel Hunter and stuff like that, um, Al Jazeera, you know, players that are in their prime, top-notch players that we as Joe the Fan want to see the team bring in, well, they're not doing those. They know we're, we're getting ready for Dak Prescott and his contract. So I don't know where this leaves all of this. I don't know why. This is the thing that, that makes me feel like we are trying to just start all over. Is the whole mentality of let's just wait till August. Let's just wait until August. And here's what I want you to understand here. Because let me pull up something here real quick. Here's the thing that is funny to me because we have everybody pissed off because it's like you can't pay Dak Prescott sixty million a year. Oh my God, how can you do that? Well, let's play let's do a little exercise here. These are the top paid quarterbacks in the NFL. Okay? Jalen Hurts got his $255 million a year. I mean, excuse me, $255 million contract. That's $51 million a year. I want you to, well, shout out to Ewin, cheers. I want you to look at Jalen Hurts' breakdown per year. Don't know why my computer's so slow today. Okay, let me back it up and try it again. Jalen Hurts' breakdown was like $8 million last year. Why is it? Okay, we're we're having a hard time. Now I get it. Um, Dak Prescott was asking for $5 million more than what Jalen Hurts is. Here we go. There we go. Look at the breakdown for the numbers on his contract. Six million for last year, thirteen million for this year. Twenty one for twenty five. Thirty one for twenty six. Forty one and twenty seven. Forty seven and twenty eight. Now, understand they did backload a lot of money into twenty twenty nine for ninety seven million dollars. But they did that deal, and they're not paying that much for their quarterback, okay? You understand where I'm talking about here? Let's look at Justin Herbert, who's at $52 million. Now it's going fast, okay. Justin Herbert's deal last year, okay? $52 million a year. 8.4. This year, 19.3. Next year, 37, 46, in 58 in 2027. Let's look at Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. His cap hit last year, 19 million. 29 this year. If we had a $29 million cap hit, we'd be through the hoops, through the moon right now. 46 and 25 next year. Okay, that's not great, but still a lot better than what we have at Dak right now. And then we have 48 in 2026. So why is it other teams figure out how to sign their quarterback and get cap relief? And we hear from uh, Sport Track 
Dak Prescott, three-year deal. First year, first year is 46. The second year is 80 or something like that. It's like, how, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? But what I'm telling you is, is there's a problem with how the Cowboys deal with this money. They don't know how to deal it. As much as I hate the Eagles, they know how to manipulate the cap and and do magical things. Because we don't sign anybody outside our organization, but yet we're in one of the worst positions of anybody. Now, let's hear what um, we get from Albert Greer about what the Cowboys are doing. Last one for you, Albert, and I appreciate the time. Uh, what are the Cowboys doing? What are they doing? Uh, exactly. I would say uh, bracing for what's to come. And what's to come is the Dak Prescott negotiation. What's to come is the Micah Parsons negotiation. And, you know, I know, didn't Jerry make the comment, was it all in? Was it yeah. something like that? And I thought yeah. that meant the negotiation for Dak would happen now. You extend him and you have more space for, say, someone like uh, – the running back who just signed with the Ravens about an hour ago. Right. You know what I mean? Right, Derrick so, Henry, which, you know, like there are the rumors there because he has a house in Dallas. Or I don't know. Plus, plus um, that's exactly what they could use. Um, hey, I, I, real estate, I, I, yeah, and, and I, I will say, like in all seriousness, Kirk Cousins. sometimes real estate does lead you follow like, the, down the right road. Follow the Zillow, Albert. Follow the Zillow, yeah. you know? So, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, the, I, I, think it's, I, think it's, I think it's bracing for what's ahead and bracing for um, – you know, the potential, the potential that they get both Dak Prescott and Micah Parsons done this offseason and what it's going to cost to do that. And I, you know, as much as we focused on Dak Prescott and what that's going to cost, I would not like look past it how complicated the negotiation with Micah Parsons could be and how difficult that negotiation could be. And so, like, I, like, I think that there's, part of this where you're keeping your powder dry because you know those things are coming down the pike but why not do it have, now and, and get you're the gonna space have to get creative that's what and i'm that saying you're gonna have to then, that, and that means you're gonna have to get creative with the way that you do things and you remember last year creative. i believe it was during draft weekend that they traded for stefan gilmore and that wound up being a really really good addition sure for them. so i think for teams looking to be creative that have to maintain financial flexibility the time to dive in usually isn't on the first day of free agency. There's a lot of off season left and I would expect that the Cowboys will be creative the way they were last year in trying to add to their roster because they need to maintain that financial flexibility because of the two big ticket items sitting there on the roster. But I thought maybe you do it now, get the flexibility on the cap and use it to go all in with guys who are available right now that can help you win yeah. the games in January. You've been struggling to win. You could, February. you could. This isn't a great free agent class either, too. Okay. So that's the other part of it. Like, and I, I know we all get excited this time of year, but it drops off pretty quick after the top end. And I know there were some teams out there that I, I teams I consider smart teams mm -hmm. that felt like this wasn't the year to spend because of that. Because when you're talking about a class that's like got a thin layer of top talent, right? Mm -hmm. Then that top talent necessarily is going to get paid because you're going to have teams bidding on them, feeling they don't have backup options. You know, mm -hmm. so. I do think for, you know, some of the teams, even like the Ravens, like the Ravens really like Derrick Henry, um, but they didn't sign him on day one, right? Like they 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 signed their own guy in Justin Batabuke, and then they they go out and they get Derrick Henry on day two, not on day one. Um, you know, I think that there are a fair amount of teams that you would consider some of the smarter teams in the NFL that I think strategically took a pass on the first day of free agency, even like Detroit, right? Detroit goes out and trades for Carlton Davis. They were pretty quiet otherwise, weren't they? Mm -hmm. I think that's a good example of it, too. Catch the Rich Eisen show every... There you go. So maybe, I don't know, maybe that they were wise not to blow the budget early on, and maybe they'll be able to find some other things later on. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I've got my doubts right now, but this isn't the first time. Um this is exactly how it was last year, and we'll have to wait and see. All right, good people. I hope you're having a good evening, and I'll see you soon. Peace.